All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about some of my biggest fears while living in the Philippines. Stick around. All right, guys, so a lot of people, when they move out to the Philippines or Southeast Asia, for that matter, they may have some fears. Now, for me, I have a few, and it's not like they're huge fears where I uh, can't sleep at night or I sit up worrying all night uh, about these fears. I don't. Probably the biggest fear that most people encounter and that is what will happen if some kind of serious medical uh, condition happens or a medical emergency. That seems to be everyone's biggest fear in the Philippines and for good reason. The medical is not really up to par. Uh, I've experienced it going to different hospitals and the way the emergency rooms set up. I've been to emergency rooms that have been set up outside where the people are sitting on gurneys just sitting outside in the parking lot. Um, but I've also been to nice hospitals, you know, here in Dumaguete I went to uh, an eye appointment the other day in Ace Hospital and it was, I was pleasantly surprised. So it's kind of hit and miss. And a lot of people say, well, you know, if I have some major, if I have some medical emergency, I'll just hop on a plane and fly home. Well, guess what? If you get into some major medical emergency, for example, you have a serious motorbike accident, you're not, you're not just hopping on the uh, next flight to go back to Australia or Canada. You're going to have to get to a stable position where you can get home again. Uh, things like a stroke or uh, a heart attack where you would need bypass surgery. You don't just, uh, you know, if it's critical condition, you're not just hopping on a plane and um, going back to the States. You know, it's just not happening. So I think for a lot of foreigners, that is one of the big concerns about living in the Philippines. And it is for me. Right now, I'm healthy in, lo in life. But you never know. Like, like I've said in other videos, I had a best friend who died at the age of 50. So you just don't know what could happen. And along with a medical emergency comes the financial aspect of it. Uh, most people, I would say most people honestly, that I've run into don't have the means to even pay for an, a medical emergency here. Most don't have health insurance or travel medical insurance. They don't have a safety nest if um, something were to happen. I mean, a lot of people don't even have enough expenses to cover the next month. So that is uh, a huge issue for some. But if you get into a major medical issue here, like a motorcycle accident, I had a buddy who had a serious motorcycle accident. And again, it came down to he wasn't even able to travel back to the United States. They had to get him stable. It took about a month before they gave him the okay to fly back home. Like they wouldn't even let him leave. Meanwhile, this bill is continuing. In fact, at one point, his, his mom was uh, paying with the credit card and he had maxed out his credit card because he didn't really have a savings. He had maxed out his credit card and when that happened, until his mom could send the payment information, they basically wheeled him out of his room and left him in the hallway. And just left him in the hallway and cut off the pain medication. Yeah, can you imagine that? So, I, that's another major concern. It does not work the same way that it works with like socialized medicine in certain countries or the United States where they have the Hippocratic Oath that they have to treat you. You know, uh, you'll get a big bill later, but they at least have to treat you. So that is a major concern as well. Another one are uh, natural disasters. It's not something that I really concern myself over too much, but I've had a few incidents. You know, when I first moved to Cebu, we had an earthquake. I was uh, working at that time. I think I was on the... 11th floor and the whole building was swaying. It was my first earthquake I've ever experienced in my life and if you've never experienced one to be standing there I was 
training some uh, teachers at the time and all of a sudden the building started swaying. It's a pretty scary moment. Uh, another time I was in Davao and had a major earthquake where my whole condo building was shaking. And then I was in General Santos and had a major one where my condo building was shaking. And I learned from that one that actually the condo building that I lived across from in Davao had uh, tumbled down, had, uh, had eventually had to be uh, torn down because of the structural damage from that. Uh, and then of course, if you guys, for those guys who have followed my channel for a while, you know I went through that typhoon in uh, Mokhtan, Newtown in Cebu. Good thing I lived in a condo uh, because I was pretty safe, but it was uh, a pretty devastating uh, typhoon. So. What have I learned from all of this? Well, one, you gotta have a health insurance or a big nest egg, or ideally you need to have both. You should have a big nest egg. Um, it should be no different than like if you're living in Australia or the US where you should not be trying to live paycheck to paycheck. And it seems we get a lot of that type of people here in the Philippines that they say, oh, you know what? I was a paycheck to paycheck person in the US, but really the only problem was that I um, just wasn't making enough money. But a lot of these issues aren't just that they didn't have enough money, it's their spending habits and saving habits. They've just never acquired good spending habits or good saving habits. And they come out to the Philippines and they come out to the Philippines and they maintain those same exact habits that they had in their country terrible spending habits, no savings, not able to save, living check to check, you know, their social security, maybe their military disability, whatever income they have coming in. And they bring that here and they continue that lifestyle. And this is not the place to have that lifestyle because you don't have a network of support. There's not a lot of expats here that are going to be, hey, sure, yeah, I'll, I'll lend you 50,000 pesos for your um, uh, broke arm uh, surgery or whatever, uh, you know, for your motorcycle accident. Oh, you can't pay the rent this month. Sure, I'll lend you 50,000 pesos. Most expats don't want anything to do with that. This is not like the states. They know that uh, you're probably not good for it. And it happens a lot. Most expats who've lived here for a while, they will tell you that there's a lot of foreigners who ask for money too. It's not just Filipinos who uh, want to borrow money from me. Guess what? It's also a lot of expats. By the way, I'm here at the uh, Henry Resort, just uh, relaxing. We had a brown out again here in the Philippines. It's uh, somewhat normal, unfortunately. So again, savings. You need to learn and have good savings, uh, saving habits. You should still continue to save. I use Acorns. Uh, there's a link down in the description. I'm not any kind of financial guru. It's just what I use. It's easy to save. And uh, there's a link in the description. I like it. And um, also, you, you need to have some health insurance, travel medical, or you can contact my buddy Michael. There's a video up above if you want to watch that, and uh, you can contact him. And uh, it just it should just be part of your budget. The saving money. You know what they always say? They say pay yourself first. When you get paid, first thing, you, first bill you do is you pay yourself. Um, you should have health insurance, or at least enough of a savings that you can self-insure yourself. As far as the rest, don't get too... Be prepared that you you could pick up and leave if you had to. You don't have so much invested in one area that if an earthquake or a major typhoon came through that you would be devastated. Um, for the longest time I was a minimalist here in the Philippines just living out of a couple of suitcases and up until the point where I met Maya that's how I have lived and uh, that is finally changing for obvious reasons but I still at this point there's nothing that I couldn't just walk away from without having any problem whatsoever you know I walk away from it 
So, anyway, guys, uh, let me know what some of your big uh, concerns are. I think I probably hit on the most common ones for most expats, foreigners living out in the Philippines. Check out my Geo Travel Essentials on my webpage if you want to see all the things I highly recommend for traveling or living out in the Philippines. And uh, you can sign up for a consultation on my webpage also. And if you want to help support the Geo in the Philippines channel, you can sign up with my YouTube membership or my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash geo in the Philippines. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.